Hi, this is Bob. Uh, working on a Heathkit IP2715 battery eliminator. This is basically a DC power supply. Very similar to the, I believe it's a HP 1144, which was used with the uh, SB104, HW104 series of radios made by uh, Heathkit and then they use the same transformer and all and the same circuits in the IP2715. Now this one was given to me by a, a good friend lives in Henry, Illinois and uh, I have used it here for a while and uh, decided to do some more checking on it and uh, the thing I ran into was that these little caps that uh, hold that are go over the uh, power transistors these little caps uh, they make a connection to the uh, collector of that transistor through those little aluminum bushings that you see there and also through these um, zinc plated 632 screws and as you can see right here these things tend to corrode and you can see corrosion quite plainly on that one there's also one back here too this transistor drives the other four power transistors there are two heat sinks there's a heat sink in the back there's a heat sink in the front you got some really big filter capacitors in here so this is a nice power supply and I want to use it here on the bench but I did find when checking it out that uh, by touching these screws some of them were very hot and the reason is because of this corrosion you've got resistance there so what I decided to do was to replace those screws with these three-quarter inch stainless steel screws and leave those plastic caps off and that way you're not conducting through those aluminum bushings that eliminates another source of a possible problem so uh, you do have to be careful not to connect something between the heat sink and the transistor that would short it out that is possible but uh, I would prefer to have it that way and have uh, better connection so that's what I did and I'm putting like I say these three quarter inch stainless steel screws now I know the stainless screw steel screws probably do not conduct any better maybe a little worse than the original uh, original um, zinc plated 632 screws but uh, one thing about the stainless steel screws is uh, they aren't going to rush rust they aren't going to tarnish and the connection will remain good for years and years so I'm using the stainless steel screws but I just wanted to show you that and it's very easy to change them. You just unscrew these screws and uh, pull the cap off and stick the new ones in there and you're all set to go. This is a real nice power supply and I want to use it for uh, general use on, on the workbench and it's got an amp meter in the front and a uh, and a voltmeter as well. It's also got a control there where you can uh, run the voltage up and down anywhere from 9 volts to uh, 15 so it's a really nice power supply and I like that great big power transformer in there and the big filter capacitors and all and it's got four of these pass transistors so there's a lot of lot of uh, good parts in these so these are three quarter inch 632 stainless steel screws and it's that easy guys now I, I do notice that uh, there's plenty of that white heat sink compound under there so I'm not even going to bother uh, checking that out but what I am going to do is I'm going to take my uh, Simpson 260 ohm meter and I'm going to check for shorts by connecting between the chassis and 
some reason that one doesn't want to start down there. These, these, uh, you can do this with these because they got very stiff wires on them in the back. Well, I don't know why that guy won't, won't start. The bottom one just didn't want to go in there. But I will loosen up the top one here. Sometimes things like that happen, you know. Loosen up the top one. Put him in the bottom. And see if he'll go. Yes, I can feel it. It's in there. Okay. And I'm not going to tighten them one down until I get the other one in. There we go. Yeah, using the camera with one hand and the screwdriver with the other. There we are. I just snug those down. I, I you can snug them down pretty good with these transistors because these have got these have got the uh, mica insulators. So you can put a little more torque on these. So those are all in there. Now, what I was talking about too was checking the Now first I'm checking the ohm meter here by touching the probes together on R times 1 scale. I sure do like my Simpson meter. And then I'll touch the collector of each transistor. Did you see that? Uh, the meter deflected just a little bit. And I'll show you that when I touch the collector. See it deflect? Then come back over and it should read all the way over on R times 1, which tells me that I have not accidentally shorted out one of the transistors to the chassis there or to the heat sink. Okay, here comes the acid test. We're going to flip on the power switch. There we go. It's showing uh, 12 volts there right now. This is our voltage control right here. And of course it's not showing any current because I don't have anything connected. And there is a standby switch on these two. When you flip that, you're still indicating the voltage here because the capacitors are charged. Uh, and there's still voltage on that meter. But there's no voltage to the outputs until you flip the standby switch to operate. So that's it. The Heathkit IP2715 power supply and a little bugaboo that can uh, cause you problems. So I thought I would like to show that to you guys and be sure to check your hardware. Make sure your hardware is tightened up on these things. All of the Heathkits, uh, people put them together and people, some of the people don't tighten the nuts and bolts very tight. So you want to check all those things the nuts and bolts when you're working on these. That's it for today. 73's and good DX.